Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Saturday, uh, January 16th, 2021, and I just wanted to bring you an update and talk about Tesla. Very hot stock right now, obviously, and I just wanted to share some words of caution. Uh, and to be, f to be clear, I am bullish long term on Tesla in terms of the business. I think Elon Musk is really cool. I think that uh, they are going to continue to deliver more vehicles. Really a fan of Elon Musk and I hope that he can pull through on this and his other projects like uh, his other companies like SpaceX and the Boring Company etc but there are some concerns in terms of trading Tesla it could be a, a very volatile stock uh, down the line here during this year possibly into the future so you know that that's something that's something that could cause people to lose money because people you know if um, so you know look at the, the run-up here so Tesla zoom in a little bit Tesla has had a, a really strong run up obviously in 2020 you know this is just a one month if I go back six months it's gone up five six times something like that you know it was uh, less than hundred dollars during the coronavirus crash back in March and now it's over 800 as you probably know 820 and change 826 as of this recording and the valuation though is pretty stretched. It's a massive PE and then there's questions about is it actually op uh, profitable on an operating basis because of those EV credits that people may not know about and I'll mention that uh, more in a moment. But there are some uh, people you know, questioning this and that's why here I have Michael Burry, uh, the famous big short investor who was also portrayed by Christian Bale in the movie The Big Short. And he has shorted Tesla as of about a month ago roughly maybe a little less than a month ago and currently he is down on his short he is in the red uh, but he hasn't closed the position so he hasn't you know locked in any losses or anything like that um, but he's saying uh, his his Tesla short is getting bigger and bigger which means that he is continuing to short more shares as the stock price continue has continued to rise since he initially opened the short position you know he probably opened it uh, I don't know. I think it was. I think he, uh, the first heard about it when he was a little over 700. So he might be down like 100 dollars or something like that each share in terms of the short since it's gone on uh, about 100 dollars per share since then. But um, you know, he because this guy, what he does, he's a value investor and he's looking at uh, companies and he invests on things that he thinks are undervalued. And if he's shorting something, that means he has a strong conviction that he thinks it's currently overvalued. Um, and he is not, and I am not predicting anything like the bankruptcy of Tesla or the failure of Tesla or anything like that. But when you have something that comes up this hard, this fast, there is risk that it could swing the other way. And, you know, there's some other things talking about the valuation here. So, for example, this is talking about how Tesla's market cap, meaning the total value of the company, which as we can see over here, the market cap is almost $800 billion for Tesla. It is, it is more than the nine largest automakers combined behind it. You know, large automakers like um, GM, BMW, Toyota, you, you name it. You know, all those other guys that are selling millions of vehicles and are making a lot, a lot more profit and are generating a lot more revenue than Tesla is. Although, you know, that's I am long term uh, to, to reiterate, this is not a call to, you know, I'm not bashing on Tesla. I think it's a cool company. I think it in the long term. I think they're likely, very likely, to be successful. But on just these are words of caution. If you're thinking about getting into Tesla right now, this may not be the best entry point because it is stretched, and there's a reason that Michael Burry and some other players have made shorts on it. Can they get burned? Can Tesla continue to go up? Yes, of course. And even Elon Musk himself has warned his employees, as you can see, warning them. Uh, here's the headline, Elon Musk warns employees Tesla stock could get crushed if it doesn't do this. And by this, they're kind of this is kind of a clickbait title, but they're talking about if it doesn't meet the market's expectations. So, um, you know, the market is expecting... So one of the other things that has been happening, this was the second time, I believe, in 2020, that Tesla did what is called a secondary offering, which is something important to understand. So what a secondary offering is, it's when a company that is already public 
they offer more new shares to investors to raise more capital. Tesla will actually receive this money to fund operations. And they filed this again uh, in early December for $5 billion of a secondary stock offering. offering. But what, what that you need to understand about that uh, in terms of the short term or medium term direction of the stock price, uh, especially if they don't meet expectations, this will increase the number of shares, Tesla shares, in the market that are trading. And what that means, it's called, we call it dilution in the industry. And what that means is, uh, just like anything else, a stock price is dictated by supply and demand. So if there are more people, or if there's the same number of people trying to buy shares, and there's suddenly more shares when they do a secondary offering, that could reduce the stock price, uh, push it down, potentially. Tesla is selling something called regulatory credits. And what these are, they are uh, benefits offered by the government for producers, in this particular case, of electric vehicles, such as Tesla, of course. And other um, car manufacturers can benefit from these as well if they produce electric vehicles. But since Tesla only produces electric vehicles, and right now they are definitely ahead of the market on that, they have the most, you have to produce a certain number of electric vehicles each year in order to meet a certain uh, threshold or a minimum and uh, you get a credit you get a regulatory credit for that and if you don't meet the number of the, the regulatory credits that is minimum either you have to pay a fine to the government or you have to purchase regulatory credits from another car manufacturer that has accumulated regulatory credits by producing electric vehicles and so what happens is uh, other car manufacturers who are not producing enough or are not producing any electric vehicles yet, you know, any other uh, car manufacturer in the industry, they are going to choose to purchase the regulatory credits from Tesla instead of paying the fine because they can negotiate uh, paying less to Tesla instead of paying the fine that the government would impose because otherwise, you know, if they pay the fine, Tesla does have an incentive to negotiate with them because otherwise Tesla would receive uh, no money if they don't uh, offer them a, a lower price. But what this does in terms of the, the, the accounting of Tesla, it makes them look like they have an accounting profit when actually uh, if they didn't benefit from that uh, government uh, benefit here, as we can see, and you know I looked at the financials, but let's keep this simple. Uh, for the 12-month period up to August of 2020, they would have had a $681 million operating loss. And there is some, there are some other things to think about. It may have still been profitable because of something called stock-based compensation, but just just the the picture may not be as rosy as it, it looks because uh, without these regulatory credits, Tesla would not uh, you know be able to do that. What eventually will happen is other car manufacturers will start to produce electric vehicles, and when they do, they will also EV credits from the government. And if that happens, if they receive those EV credits from the government, that means they no longer need to purchase them from other car manufacturers such as Tesla, which would mean that the market for EV credits could dry up. Uh, either they'd be worth less or Tesla would be unable to sell them in the future and they wouldn't be able to pad their bottom line, their, their profit with that. So that's something to keep in mind. Also of related news is the consumer side of the EV credits, so EV tax credits. So the government throughout, since 2009, throughout the year, uh, throughout the decade, they had been offering EV tax credits to purchasers of electric vehicles, which to some extent uh, would have increased the demand for electric vehicles since people could benefit from tax credits for purchasing electric vehicles, which would mean that they could use that as a write-off on their taxes and save money on their tax bill each year when they file it with the IRS. And that ended uh, as of December 31st. 2021, uh, 2020, excuse me, December 30th, 31st, 2020. Although uh, the Biden administration may in reinstate that or replenish the tax credits, restore it for Tesla and GM, as GM is right now the other uh, company producing electric vehicles in significant numbers in the United States and selling them there. So that could boost electric vehicle demand uh, during 2021 if they do bring it back and perhaps into the future, and that could be a help to Tesla. So to sum up, I do think that Tesla is a really great company. I do think their long-term future for the business is bright. They are going to continue to ramp up production, deliver more vehicles. I think they are going to continue to increase revenue. But there are some short-term headwinds for the stock. I think that that is clear uh, potentially because of the valuation. It's just really high. Look at the, look at the P ratio. Look at the revenue compared to competitors. 
and just be aware of that because I don't want people to get burned in the short term and then they sell at a loss and then they're discouraged or uh, they are depressed or you know a lot of things could happen to an investor when they're not used to volatility so please be careful and do your homework before you invest in anything even Tesla hey guys this is Chris with forward finance so thanks for watching the video please like and subscribe if you'd like more content updates on Tesla and other companies and check out my links in the description for some other videos some other companies that have covered and I will keep updating you on things that happen with these companies and other exciting things in the industry so please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video